We've now had almost a year of lockdown. I know I've said this before, but because I am shielding, I only really went and did anything fun with my friends in August, and even then it was a social distance. Come on then, cat. You're the only friend I've had for a good few months. After August, the only time I did anything fun was I went for a couple of socially distanced walks, literally two or three, and <laughs> that was it. But this entire year feels like it's flown by and I don't have a lot to show for it time is just going by really fast and yet every day has felt exactly like this. So I thought, is there actually a way I can slow down time? And there's a few different theories about what affects our perception of time. One of them has to do with your age. So for example, if you are four years old, one year is going to feel like a really long time because that's 25% of your life. But for me, as a 27 year old, I keep wanting to say that I'm 26. That's how fast this year has gone. One year accounts for 3.7% of my life. I can lie about my age as much as I want, but that's not gonna change how I perceive time. The other thing that has a very big impact on how we perceive time and the speed at which it goes is experiences. Our brains anchor moments in time based around new experiences. So if we're doing the same things, all of the time and have far too much routine in our lives then it's going to feel like time is passing us by much quicker and unfortunately lockdown means that we have had a lot of the same for a very long time so this week i'm going to try slowing down time by concentrating just on packing my week full of new experiences i'm gonna try and devote at least 10 minutes a day for a week to doing something I've not done before and seeing if the week by the end of it feels like it's gone a little bit longer than every other week <laughs> has felt in the last year. Day one of trying to slow down time and trying out new experiences. So I thought I'd come out into the garden and have a go at learning a dance from YouTube, which is something I've not done before, mainly because I can't dance. I had a brief stage in school where I totally thought that the path for me was that I was going to be some sort of West End performer. Spoiler, didn't happen. So I ended up taking GCSE dance and I got an E. <laughs> so yeah, not, not a natural dancer me. Hopefully it's not too torturous. 20 minute hip hop dance class, Learn a Dance With Me by Lucy Fink. I think that's what we're gonna go for. Brief interlude while the cat has a shit. What you are about to see was genuinely my best attempt. Well, it's safe to say I'm still not launching a dance career anytime soon. Day two. As well as time passing me by, I feel like the last year has aged me. So I thought today I would try out a facial massage. It's in the morning, I'm still in my pyjamas, I'm doing this before work. So we're just going to give this a go and hope for the best. Maybe this will be a new part of my routine, although that defeats the whole point of this video because the whole point of this video is about doing new things. Open up the skin on the eyes just to create some definition there. They want you to use a ball on your face. I'm gonna go with a mug because it's, I don't know, ball shaped.
I don't know, does my face look different? Right, we got no makeup on because I've got about 15 minutes left of my break. The cat is here being annoying because he won't just lie down and... Can you please lie down, please? No, okay. Today, I thought I'm gonna have a crack at Welsh. My dad is from Wales, but he is from South Wales. For anyone who doesn't know about Wales, they predominantly speak Welsh in the North, not in the South. My dad hasn't a clue. But Welsh is one of the oldest languages in Europe and also suffered a lot of persecution from the English to deliberately try and wipe it out. So I thought I'd give it a go, seeing as it literally is the land of my fathers. I don't really think I can even pronounce that, but I know it means good morning. Boreda. Know this one because it's on the signs as you drive into Wales. It means welcome. Criso. Nega. Oh, okay. A dragon. Of course, that would be in greetings. Good morning, dragon. Milk. Slice. I'm so sorry. Kuru. Beer. Important one. Oh, oh god. This is what I'm looking at. How am I supposed to figure out which of those is right? They all uh, <laughs> look like Welsh. Uh, bottom one. Oh, thank god for that. That was stressful. Another day in my dressing gown. I've been in a funk, I've been in a bad mood. I mean, pff, lockdown in it. Is my room a mess? Yes. Is that a metaphor for my life? Probably. Have I had a drink to try and navigate that? Is the Pope Catholic? But I thought I'd try something a little bit more spiritual. I was sent the Good Karma Tarot deck by Kerry Ward. Kerry is a tarot reader and astrologer I've had the pleasure of working with in any projects where I've needed someone like that in my career as a journalist. This is her very first deck, which she very kindly sent to me. I have tried very briefly to have a go at learning tarot before with a different deck, but I just found that for me, it made tarot seem a little bit too auspicious, spiritual, not really accessible for me. But as Kerry explains in the book that comes with the deck, she doesn't see herself as a fortune teller, psychic or anything like that. She views the cards as more of an opportunity for self-reflection and introspection when you need a little bit of help with that and to share a little bit of everyday magic. She doesn't know that I'm including this in this video, I just wanted to give it a go. It comes with a deck of cards, a book telling you what all of the cards mean and some example spreads that you can get started. Oh my god, this is so spooky! And these were the cards that I pulled. I'm not going to tell you exactly what situation I was trying to reflect on, but let me tell you, it was very apt. That was wild. Truly wild. I, I don't understand. Next new thing, repotting my plants. I've got five on my windowsill and one that lives on top of my chest of drawers. I'm not green fingered, so most of my plants are cacti and succulents because they're much harder to kill. And I'm ashamed to admit this, but I have never repotted them myself. Yes, even when I lived in a flat in London, I would bring them home for my mum to repot for me. Although, in my defence, I didn't have a garden and you can't get small bags of compost. I'm taking these outside so that I can repot them out there where it won't matter too much that I'm going to be making a really big mess. Yeah. Naturally, I did what any good millennial would do and got my mum to help me. This peace lily is now too big for any pots that I own, so what I've decided to do is split it and then repot it into more than one pot. If only it were that easy though, this plant had other ideas and really did not want to be split. Please don't try this at home. I definitely did not know what I was doing and I mean my mum likes gardening. I can't be that confident that she knows what she's doing though. I finally got them apart with a bit of brute force.
Gloves on. It's time to tackle the prickly bitches. Now, as some of these plants had to go in bigger pots, I didn't have room for all of them to come back in my room, so I had to find space for them elsewhere in the house. But it was a really good opportunity for me to finally clean my windowsill and my windows before I put them back. I bought this head plant pot in TK Maxx a few years ago and I'm obsessed with it, I love it so much. But naturally dealing with soil it gets quite dirty so I just wanted to give it a quick clean so that you can see her beautiful face, look at that. Stunning, don't ever change hun. Now I have baked a cake before, but I've not baked this cake before. For my next challenge, I thought I would bake a pistachio, cardamom and white chocolate cake. For fans of Bake Off, this recipe is actually from Chetna's book called The Cardamom Trail. She was on the show a few years ago now. I bought her book because she is all about baking with plenty of flavour. This was only the second time I'd ever made anything from this book. I'm just not really that much of a foodie, I don't like cooking, so I don't bake very often, but in the spirit of trying new things, here I am. One hour later. I've since discovered that this is actually the cake on the front cover of the book. And yeah, mine doesn't look anywhere near as stunning. But I tell you what, it was a very good cake. I enjoyed eating it very much. And now I get to lick the bowl. The final new thing of this week of new things is that I have gone for a walk. I have obviously been for a walk before, but I haven't been this particular route before. I've got a book with me. I'm going to try and find somewhere to sit down and read that for a bit that I've not read this book before. And the other thing is because of shielding and everything, I actually haven't been for a walk since December. So that's three months of just being stuck in my little house with a little garden. And I mean, the weather's shit anyway, so why would I go and sit in the garden? I have been allowed to go for walks in this time but I've just wanted to be as cautious as possible just because I think we're so close to the end of all of this. Shielding ends on the 31st of March. I was going to try and wait until then to start going back out for walks and things but I've just been cooped up for so long I can't anymore and yeah and I've had my vaccine so it's been a couple of weeks now I should have some good immunity so here I am. So I found somewhere to sit and I read for about 20 minutes. At the end of this week, do I think I managed to slow down my perception of time? Do you know what? I think I did. I think the week felt longer than a lot of weeks have during these lockdown times. When I was doing some research, when I decided I was going to make this video, I found that there were some other theories on how to slow down your perception of time and those were including journaling and mindfulness in your daily routine. Those are things that a lot of people already do, which is why I wanted to focus on new experiences. None of the things I did were particularly time consuming or emotionally taxing. 
So I think if you feel the same way and that all the days are blurring into one, time's passing you by, it's like you're living in Groundhog Day, carving out 10 minutes when you can for doing something new, even if it's just reading a book you've never read before, can make quite a lot of difference. It doesn't even need to be every day, maybe just a couple of times a week. If you do still feel like you're stuck though, I am stuck with you and will still be making lockdown lifestyle videos. From now on though, new videos will be coming at you every Wednesday, so be sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. Until next time, peace out.